Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the 31 Days of Tarot. If you are new to the 31 Days of Tarot, it is a set of prompts, one for every day in January, and this is an annual tradition started by the wonderful Ethany. I will link her channel and her video with the list of all of the prompts in the cards and in the description box down below, one or the other or both. And I'm going to be sharing with you my answer for prompt number 22. I keep doing this with my, what is this? Anyway, um, which is your top five tarot decks, 2010 to 2019. Holy cow, was this one difficult to do. It's one thing to try to figure out your top five decks of an entire year, which is already tricky. And then you're asking me about a decade? That was just mean, Ethany. Just mean. Um, but I managed to narrow it down, and what I did was I focused on the decks that really impacted the way I look at tarot, my practice. Um, so these are like sort of the most impactful decks, or the most surprising decks, I guess, in a way. The ones that sort of represent that time period for me, or etc., etc. I'm going to jump right into this because I am babbling, and that's how I roll. Welcome to the babble zone. I feel like that should be in my trailer or something. Welcome to the babble zone. I don't even have a trailer on my channel. See? Babbling. Let's start with a deck that will surprise nobody, and that is my Mons Tarot. First, let's just pause for a moment and appreciate the extraordinary embroidery that Peggy did for me to create this custom Peggy bag for this deck. It hasn't been living in its Peggy bag lately, which I use the Peggy bag to display. I have sort of a Mons Tarot corner on an altar space because that is how much I love this deck. Um, but I have this beautiful Peggy bag for it when it's hanging on my wall behind me. And I have this gorgeous custom Dustin box. <laughs> Um, Dustin at Modern Metaphysic Man makes custom tarot boxes and he made this one just for me. Look at the unicorns on the inside. It's so me. Um, so this is the box that it lives in when it's up on that altar and it features the Illuminator card which was an exclusive card for the first edition of this deck. Currently this deck is out of print but I believe there are plans to reprint it in the future. I just don't know precisely when. Um, one of the ways that this deck impacted me is that it was the first deck, probably the major way this impacted me is this is the first deck that felt like it was my soul deck. There's something about the adorable nature of this deck that just feels like it talks right to the innermost part of me. It feels like me in a deck. I never thought that the monster theme would be one that I would be all about, but there's something about these monsters. And I think one of the things that I really, really love about this deck is that the whimsical nature of these characters, just the fact that they kind of create their own world, it sort of takes me out of the mundane world and brings me more into the spirit world. I find this deck incredibly easy to read with. It's literally like we were just meant to be me in this deck. And it is definitely one of those treasured possessions that I have. I was extremely blessed and touched when a subscriber offered to send me this deck. It was actually, I believe, the first deck or anything anybody ever sent me after starting my channel, and it meant so, so much. And the fact that I just bonded with it so well from the beginning, it just, it completely made my year. But I think this deck may have come into my life actually in 2018, so not my year. But the reason this is one of the top five for the last 10 years is this was the first deck that I really felt like I could call a soul deck. And I kind of want to say that with a bit of a disclaimer because I think sometimes we can get a little attached to this idea that we need to find the one, like the one deck. And what I've learned about finding what I feel like is a soul deck for me is that I don't think it's such a thing as there's just one. I think that this deck will always be incredibly special to me and will always have like a very special place in my collection. It will always be a deck that I treasure and if my house were burning down right now, this would still probably be the very first deck that I would grab. But I think sometimes we get a little bit too attached to this idea of finding that magical one and that can actually lead to buying a whole lot of things trying to figure out which one is the one. And I think sometimes it's good to back away from that idea a little bit and just work with what brings you joy. And if that's um, a Rider Waite Smith standard deck, that's it. If it's 
If it's a crazy cute deck like the Mons Tarot, then that's the one. But whatever it is that you're enjoying working with that's bringing you joy, it doesn't matter if it's like, you don't have to be monogamous with your decks. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you know what I mean? It can be whatever you love. And I really, really, really love this deck. And there's something about, it's very comforting for me to reach for this deck and do readings. So far, I have used this deck only for myself with one singular exception. And I did do a reading that I called, it was a pick a card reading here on the channel. I called it a message for your inner child. And it was as part of my 21 Days of Yule. I will link that video up in the cards so you can check it out. But that was the only time I have ever shared this deck in a reading way with other people. So enjoy, because <laughs> I tend to be very like greedy with this one and sort of keep it all for myself. But this was definitely, has to be one of my top five for the last decade. And I'm sure there will be another deck that sweeps me off my feet. In fact, there definitely has been at least one that if I hadn't already had a deck I would call my soul deck would have been um, a deck I would probably call my soul deck. And this is what I'm saying, right? Like it doesn't, I don't know. I don't know if I'm making any sense. Hopefully I'm making some sense. Let me know your thoughts actually down below on the idea of soul decks. I'd be curious about other people's thoughts, but I really do love this one. It has a part of my heart. I love all my special accessories I've gotten for this specific deck. It just, it's like deck I like to pamper. I better move on or I'm gonna talk about the Mons Tarot for another five minutes. I'm sorry. <laughs> the next deck I wanna talk about, <coughs> partly because <clears throat> this one definitely represents part of the last 10 years for me in like a really cool way, and that is my Game of Thrones Tarot. So it's not necessarily, I would say, that this is like one of my favorite decks really of the last five years, or sorry, of the last 10 years, it's that this deck, because it's based on a series that took place between 2010 and 2019, there was eight seasons of Game of Thrones. And so this deck actually, in a lot of ways, represents the last 10 years. And I couldn't not include it for that reason. I, I was a huge fan of Game of Thrones. I really, really enjoyed it. And in fact, one of the most special things about Game of Thrones and something that will I'll be forever grateful to the Game of Thrones for is that the Game of Thrones was initially the first thing that Danny, Dustin, and I, as the three of us, and I, let me back up, Danny of Danny Mystic, Dustin of Modern Metaphysic Man, and I, the three of us together bonded over Game of Thrones first. It's kind of a funny thing. I was individually talking to Dustin, and I was individually talking to Danny, and then I was talking to Danny about Game of Thrones, and then I was talking to Dustin about Game of Thrones, and I was like, hey, why don't the three of us do a collab video and talk about the Game of Thrones? And we did, and we created the Three Fat Readers collab channel, which I will link in the cards, and it's always linked in my description box. But the Three Fat Readers is a really, really special part of my YouTube journey, and I definitely credit Game of Thrones, and we did some fun things with the Game of Thrones tarot as part of our first collab chat, and we talked about the show, and we, we shared some of our predictions and things for the last episodes, and it was just, it was that thing that created and birthed something new that is so important to me. And my friendship with those two is something that I super treasure, and yeah, so I'm getting kind of mushy, but you get the idea. I really actually enjoy working with this deck, and even though it feels like it's just a fan deck, if you know the shows, this actually gives you a ton of stuff to work with. I won't say that these cards match up with the books necessarily, because the books are continuing while the show has already finished, and it of course took its own way, but just like any deck or decks that are based on existing um, literature or stories or mythologies, whenever you know the background of these images, it just gives you so much more to play with. So Game of Thrones Tarot definitely has to be one of my top decks of the last decade. Another deck that I want to talk about that really shifted my practice and had a really big impact on me is the Mary L Tarot. This is the first edition. I have shown this um, for other prompts in this 31 Days of Tarot, so I won't spend a ton of, ton of time on it, but the Mary L Tarot was the first deeply spiritual deck that I felt like I connected to. 
it just it felt like it brought so much depth and meaning to my practice that I can't not give this a spot in my top decks of the last decade. The next deck I want to talk about was one that I swore up and down for years that I had no interest in owning or working with. I was convinced that this deck was creepy and dark and not my aesthetic and just ew. I, I was almost revolted. I mean, I don't mean to be gross, but I know other people have had this reaction. That is the Deviant Moon. I have the Borderless Edition. Eventually, my curiosity just got the better of me and I bought this deck and I started working with it and it blew me the heck away. There is something so powerful and potent about this deck. It is my number one deck for shadow work. I'll try to remember to link my video on the top five shadow work decks, but this deck absolutely brings so much richness and such a cool twist on the meanings of the cards especially if you look at them, like this Three of Pentacles, which is about collaboration, also looks at how sort of each one is having an impact on the other. There's so many cool layers of meanings in the way these cards are depicted. It just, this deck gives me life. I love it. It is one of those decks that severely, not severely, strongly impacted my personal practice and the way I view the tarot, and that makes it super special and definitely one of the most impactful decks for me of the past decade. And finally, last but not least for sure, is the deck that if this had just come into my life and I'd never had another deck I called the Soul Deck, this would probably be it. And it is the This Might Hurt Tarot by Isabella Rotman. This is not the first time in these 31 Days of Tarot you will have seen this deck either because I freaking love this deck. So I won't spend a ton of time on it just like I, just like I promised on the other ones. Um, but this is a Rider Waite Smith clone that has a modern, fresh, diverse take on the cards. It takes and twists up the genders in fun ways. It takes and makes these cards much more modern, much more approachable. This is a very relatable deck, and I feel like most people can see themselves in these cards. I'm not going to say everybody, but definitely a lot of people can see themselves in these cards, and I think that makes them a really, really cool addition to the tarot community. I think Isabella completely knocked it out of the park. There's so much symbology through here and there's so much comfort and there's a welcoming energy to this deck that just sets it apart, I think. If I were to recommend a single Rider Waite Smith style beginner tarot deck to anybody, this is the first one I would recommend, bar none. It's such a fantastic one to work with if you want to work with something a little fresher, a little more diverse, and a little more modern than the classical Rider Waite Smith deck and you're learning. Oh my gosh, is this one an amazing one to learn with? I just, I wish I'd had this deck in the 90s when I was learning tarot because this is super special and it remains my absolute favorite for client work. I just, I love this deck. I love it. So that wraps up my top five tarot decks of the last decade. I would love to hear what yours are. And remember that you can always book a reading with me over at supportivetarot.com. Remember to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you all soon. Bye.